I want to talk to you about how to increase employee performance uh, through the introduction or the rollout um, of the Getting Things Done methodology, uh, which was uh, first uh, written down, set down uh, in this book, Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity by the man on the front, David Allen, uh, back in 2001. Uh, it was the first edition of the book. So a lot is written about the uh, the tagline, if you like, of the book, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity, because GTD is very well known uh, for uh, helping with uh, workplace stress, helping with uh, work-life balance, helping with mental well-being in the workplace. And all of those things, of course, are very important. My last video was on uh, that, if you want to go and see that. But we also, we sort of missed the, the fact that we want to go over the first bit of the book, getting things done. You know, if you're uh, thinking about rolling this out for your, for your team or your organisation, um, how is it going to possibly help uh, your people who are already bright, who are already trying really hard, how is it going to help increase employee um, productivity? So what getting things done gives us, what we focus on when we work with people uh, and we want to help them is, is two things. The first thing is control. We want to give them control over all of the things that are happening in their day to day, all of the new uh, requests, new inputs that are coming to them, uh, all of the, the, the projects that they've got ongoing, all of the commitments they've made, both at work and at home. But we're talking about employee performance here. Um, and the second thing we want to help them with is perspective so that they can you know, not be just dealing with what's right in front of them, but also having an overview of you know, how does the week look, how does the month look? Um, if you're very senior, how, how, do, how does the year look? How does the, the quarter look and, and, and the year and the decade? Um, so how do we do this? Well, the control piece, uh, it's not about having control like you're a James Bond villain. Uh, it's, it's control as in you've got your hands on the steering wheel. You can choose whether you go left or you go right. Um, that also does bring a huge amount of uh, wellness at work because because one of the problems with your work is that you feel like you're being beaten up by you know too many meetings or you're, you you know you're you're suffering from your email inbox being uh, overtaken. Email management, yes, getting things done helps with email management as well. Um, but we we don't really want email management. We want email dominance. We want to sort of see that you know actually email and Microsoft Teams and Slack and anything else that we're using at work. That's just a tool to get things done, to increase our performance. We want to get better at those things so that we can take charge. We can be in the driving seat. So control, what does it, what does it look like? It, yes, you know, it, it possibly looks like, you know, your desk is neat and your emails are filed and, and, and uh, you know, your, your, your work bag is quite light because you're not carrying around millions of files with you everywhere you go. Um, but it more looks like, you know, you, you turn up to meetings on time. Uh, you respond to emails in a timely fashion. You don't need to be chased for things. You have an agenda for meetings when you get there. Um, you, you know what's coming up. You've planned enough time into your diary to prepare for the presentation that's happening next week. That's what we mean by in control. And it's a, it's a, it's a pleasant place to be. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, um, it's a much more pleasant place to be than being out of control. Uh, so, Giving people control is the first thing we try and work on because actually, if you're if you're out of control, it's really hard to worry about perspective. It's really hard to worry about what's happening in two weeks' time if if you're not sure how you're going to get to the three o'clock meeting and you know have you missed an email that's you know possibly blowing up in your email inbox. Once people have got control, once people have got the ability to to have control of of their day to day, then. They naturally move on. There's a natural sort of opening up of the mind to consider the longer game. What's happening the rest of this week? What are these projects that I'm trying to work on? What are, what are the bigger things that are, you know, why am I in these meetings? What the end goal? What what how can I consider that? So the perspective piece comes next. There's there's a couple of uh, different models we use for that. One called the horizons of focus. One called the natural planning model, and and that really takes us all the way from email dominance uh, up through projects, up through the areas of responsibility that I've got at work, through to our goals and visions, long term visions for our company and our team and 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 ourselves, um, up to the purpose and principles of, of why does this team exist? Why why does this organisation exist? Why does this role exist within the team? Um, 
And once we've got the perspective piece and the control, then we're really free to, as David Allen says, play the game of work and uh, enjoy the job of life. So I hope that helps explaining a little bit about why you might want to uh, introduce GTD to your organisation to improve employee performance. Bye for now. Thank you.